Hello again, I'm James Whelan, Managing Director of the Barclay Pierce Capital's Wealth Management Team, and you are joining us for the Hydrogen Scope, in which we're going to take some of the recent popularity and recent demand from clients, peers, and colleagues, and do a little bit of an analysis on it. Um, today, it's all about hydrogen. I am joined here by, uh, out of our London office, Jack Colreevy. Jack, how are you now? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? Not bad. Now, someone mm -hmm. who's slightly more of an expert uh, than I am and at, at these bits and pieces, you're our due diligent, due diligent person when it comes to these sorts of things. I'm more just sort of the talking head in the face of things without actually knowing any detail. But you do it so well. You're the so, detail yeah, guy. Yeah, That's yeah. right. So I've got these fake, these fake glasses that I have just to make me seem a lot smarter than they are, as you can see. So so BlackRock doesn't sponsor this podcast. BlackRock doesn't sponsor this podcast at all. <laughs> Barclay Pierce Capital does. Barclay, so. Barclay Pierce Capital's wealth management yeah, team, yeah. bringing you um, all the information. Now, I've put out a, a couple of notes on uh, hydrogen recently. We had I had one that went out a couple of days ago. I did one on Monday as well. We've had huge feedback and um, and huge flow through and call outs for how to be invested, what we can do about it, where the trend is changing, what's going on. We thought that we'd just do this uh, as a service to people to answer a few of these questions that we've got right now. Now, without going into the detail of how a hydrogen fuel cell works, we'll we'll, we'll go with assumed knowledge that you know that it does work. It is not. It's not untested. It is in use. It is in use. There, there, there's plenty of content out there for for people who want to learn more. That's right. Yes. So, and we're not the scientists in this regard. So we can we can sort of talk to the idea and the trend of going through hydrogen. The the, the one the big one that for me, which sort of opened my eyes recently, just with the fact that I am getting a lot of flow through my feed just naturally. But we all know that since our phones are listening to us, that could just be because we've been talking about hydrogen. Yeah. Next thing you know, you get a lot of hits on the yeah, on the phone. Of course. Call. But we have we we got our, our marketing fellow Amit to have a look at the Google search trends, eight hundred percent increase in the last twelve months on the search term hydrogen, eight hundred percent. Yeah, that's that, uh, that that's that's big, and and it's starting to pop up sort of again. Do we have a bubble? I don't think we have a bubble yet because it hasn't flown through to to sort of pricing of deals and all that sort of stuff. But what's great to see is interest is starting to reemerge. Mm -hmm. um, if you may recall. It's it's only been a couple of years since since hydrogen really first started gaining some traction, and I kind of likened it to to lithium. Yeah. So back in about 2018, lithium absolutely spiked. I think it got up to about sixteen thousand, uh, yeah. and every, everyone was going on about electric cars, electric cars, everything, uh, and then boom. The price halved, massive sort of bear market in regards to that, and that's just because the industry got ahead of itself. Electric cars weren't there, uh, and so it cooled off. But then, you know, last few years, lithium price has gone through the roof again. Yeah, uh, with a lot more substance and momentum there was as a result of all the majors now having electric vehicles and and huge demand for lithium. So, I, I, yeah, I remember that lithium thing happening back then. That, that the valuation of a lot of the mines is just like this is actually it's it's unfeasible that they're never going to be able to make money pulling this lithium out of the ground or whatever it is they need to do leaching or drying it as they do, depending on where it is. But the, the, the And they were still getting bought. The stocks were still getting bought. Same sort of thing was happening with some of the hydrogen programs as well. Maybe it's still happening today, but it's okay. So let, let's just go into, into, the, into the hydrogen. So a quick history of, of the way that, that hydrogen has worked around the world. Again, we're not going back to the first hydrogen <laughs> fuel cell invented by Grove. I believe it was called the Grove fuel cell in 1839. Just made that up. No idea. Um, the, so you, um, but 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 a quick history of that. So to Toyota, just from the relevant point in time, in which first off it goes back to the '60s, it's used to power um, the parts of the spaceship, the space shuttle, and the space shuttle program. Anyone who says that um, the space program was a waste of time, hydrogen came out of it, so it's pretty it's pretty effective. Toyota, more relevantly, Toyota uh, designed their fuel cell. For it, and this is this is the thing that, that was amazed me, and just sort of sums up humanity so well, that Toyota open sourced their fuel cell, the designs for their fuel cell, and instead of the world embracing that and saying, because the reason why Toyota did that is so that they wouldn't be the only ones out there with only a few fuel cells that they had. That you need engagement, you need um, yeah, you need take up. I think right? t Tesla's done something similar in terms of their. They very much open their their supply chain to other vehicle mm. manufacturers and things like that. Like yeah. you can buy an, a Tesla electric motor and create your own electric car. Mm. So Toyota Toyota did it with their fuel cell. The rest of the car makers in the world decided not to take that direction, and for the last few years have been taking the direction towards the EV, uh, towards the, the battery powered vehicles. Heavy, difficult to mine, 
I want to say expensive, dangerous, a little bit as well. Um, you know that that I, obviously I'm not a, I'm not a big battery guy. I'm more of a hydrogen person, as you know. So they did not get the take up for that. There was only I believe and fifty there's fifty fuel refueling stations in California, and only a few cars on the road. And I think they're actually going to get closed down. Um, yeah, yeah, those- they're starting to see a bit of a reversal there. So. Um, Passenger versus commercial is where I'm going here. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's horses for courses. Uh, there are various uses for hydrogen. Um, I think it's important to touch on the fact that it's quite a versatile molecule. It can be used in so many different sort of applications, uh, and that's one of the problems with the industry: people getting torn in sort of different directions. Different um, investment dollars are getting spread too thinly. I think there needs to be a more concentrated effort into well, where are the best solutions for hydrogen? Mm. And I think as a f- transport fuel source is probably one of the best. Um, so buses buses and commercial vehicles? Well, I mean, I mean across the board, but I, I definitely see it as a more of a commercial fuel yep. in the short term yep. at the very least until pricing comes down. And the reason for that is the advantages that hydrogen brings over a battery. Yeah. So a, a hydrogen uh, vehicle... Uh, is a lot lighter, so it has higher towing capacity. Um, it's able to be refilled in minutes, or well, less than five minutes rather yeah. than it's you know, five, 20 it's a five minutes minute to an hour. Yeah. All those sorts of things, which are very important to commercial vehicle users who have a high utilization rate. Time is money. They can't afford to be down mm-hmm. uh, for, for you know hours a day sort of charging. So yep. I think that's definitely the... The low-hanging fruit there. So I, I, I think it's always been the case that we think that passenger vehicles aren't going to go the hydrogen route because we've seen what happened that they're going in the battery direction. But we've seen this news recently on the on the switch from t- car companies taking the electric route and making this uh, sorry taking the the battery route and then re- making the switch to the hydrogen direction. BMW has just announced that it's going to be scrapping its its battery powered vehicles and they're taking the hydrogen direction. Um, specifically, and they're, they're going to be trial running that in South Africa. I'm amazed that the that that is just such a bold move from BMW. Yeah. To do it does it does really say that I mean it's not like they're just guessing. It's BMW, right? One of the you know oldest and the tempered history, but still, it's a it's that that they know what they're doing. They're not just making it up, and they've made the decision that they're going to be going down the hydrogen route. Mm. That's as well. Long. I mean, taking the other side of the argument, there one can argue that you know. They were slow to the ele- the battery electric vehicle. A lot of them were trend. Yeah, all of them were. Yep, it's how Tesla exists in the first place. Yeah, so their track record of analysis in this space isn't the best. Yeah. Um, having said that, look, I think there is a a dual solution here. It's it's all about well, what works best for what regions. I think if you're driving short amount of distances. And you have access to to sort of a charging infrastructure through either you have a garage at home and you're able to park your car there, or you know there's there's charging uh, posts on the street, etc. Yeah, you know, battery makes a lot of sense, and battery is probably the best solution for for most passengers because it is the most efficient means in terms of well, uh, if you take some electricity and you put it into a battery, you're getting about ninety five percent of that electricity mm-hmm. round trip. Now, the big sort of criticism of hydrogen as a fuel source is that currently um, green hydrogen through made through an electrolyzer loses about 20% of the renewable energy when it goes through that electrolyzer and then loses another roughly 20% when it gets through the fuel cell to create the electricity again. So it's, so not, looking, it's not as efficient. Yeah. So yeah. you're looking at a 40, 40 50% loss, okay. um, which isn't great. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why we've got you here. Yeah, no, no. Okay. But, but I will say that the technology is early stage. Mm-hmm. You, you, you will see with continued investment in R&D, you will see increases in this efficiency over time, which will make those losses lessen. Um, but it also, you know, there are advantages to this. I mean, you look at the aviation industry, you can't put the size, the amount of batteries that it takes. You can't fly a plane with, with a battery. Not, not, yeah, not Transatlantic flights and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. So hydrogen, hydrogen, so hydrogen power. would would be you know a, a key solution there. Yep. But um, I think it it sort of takes us. That's a good segue to talk about. Well, 
there are many ways to make hydrogen. Yes. I was going to talk about, okay, so, so, so let's go into this and we'll go with the colors because I think that we'll talk about the colors and reiterating what the colors are of the yeah. hydrogen as well. Um, okay. Look, well, you were talking. I'm going to stay out of the way. Well, well, I mean, hydrogen's not new. We have an existing hydrogen economy. Generally, it's been used traditionally for fertilizer and for fracking, mm -hmm. hydrofracking of, of oil fields and things like that. Uh, that hydrogen is made from natural gas and coal. Um, and so there's there's fossil fuels associated with that. So that's generally grey hydrogen. Um, if you do that process, uh, but capture the carbon, which you know we won't go down the avenue of if that actually works or not. It's called it's turned blue. Yep. Uh, but then if it's made using an electrolyzer, which is splitting water atoms, the oxygen and the hydrogen, uh, that's what's termed green. Okay. Now, what sort of that's if it's using a renewable. Source. That's yes, and yeah. and so yes, that's an important point. It's got to come, so, out, got so, to come out of the panels. Yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Solar, wind, hydro. Hence the, hence the green color. Yeah. Yes. Um, there are other sort of net more niche colors. Uh, pink is when nuclear is used as a as a source. For, I've not heard of that before. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I couldn't understand why you'd use nuclear power to create hydrogen, yeah. but but it's it's there. But gold hydrogen is is sort of. No, this is my. I favorite. think this is what's spiking the interest. So gold um, at is the, the moment. Gold is out of the ground. Gold Naturally is natural flowing. natural yeah. hydrogen. Just like the discovery in Mali. Uh, 2012, which I think is powering almost the entire country. I just made that up. But the, uh, the that it is powering a significant amount of them, that they have naturally free-flowing hydrogen that's just coming up with no dissipation of pressure. It has just been flowing out of there. Recently, 200 tonnes per annum discovery in Albania. Uh, I'm not going to try and name the town. Hello to our Albanian listeners if you're out there as well. Uh <laughs> I look, I look forward to getting out there. But, yeah, so the, the, a huge discovery that's in Albania. The US Geological Survey just came out this week. with an It's an unpublished paper, but they're sort of leaking it to the market saying that they've – it's always been believed that hydrogen was not freely flowing or freely available close to the surface, difficult to find. However, it seems like recent studies have, have changed the ideas of that and they now estimate – and I want to get these numbers right – most hydrogen, uh, there's 5 trillion tonnes of hydrogen existing underground, according to the USGS. Quote from the person that led the study, most hydrogen is likely inaccessible, but a few percent recovery would still supply all projected demand, 500 million tonnes a year, for hundreds of years. So there is now, there is now enough, according to the USGS, and who am I to argue with those guys, there's now enough, apparently, there's enough hydrogen that it is free-flowing and easily accessible, easily being a relative term, easily accessible to be able to power the hydrogen industry for a many lifetimes. Yeah, I mean that's that's exciting. I I I would say before you you go out with your with your drill and your picks and your shovels to try and get the hydrogen out <laughs> no, no, that, get, yeah. that look it's it's going to take some time um to develop the natural hydrogen industry as well. Uh and then Hydrogen's a completely different molecule to say methane, natural gas, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. It's a lot lighter. Um, there, are, there are different sort of chemical elements to it. So there will be a need to develop the technology as well in order to safely tap this. Yeah. Um, so because because hydrogen, hydrogen is a greenhouse gas as well. Uh, the thing about hydrogen, though, is it can escape the atmosphere eventually. Okay. Um, so we do need to be mindful about excessive expulsion of hydrogen into the atmosphere. Well, just just that I'm aware of time and being given the wrap up note from our head of marketing here as well, and fantastic Pro job, that producer Amit. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. But that, no, um, that would do. So we're okay. So free flowing hydrogen. Uh, yes, aware of the the impacts from an investment case. Where does that where does that put the market in this in this area? I, th I think for the I think for the hydrogen industry to fulfil its potential, we need to focus on supply. We need cheap and reliable supply, mm -hmm. and that will enable the end use cases. The technology exists. You can buy a hydrogen car today yep. if you wanted to. Hyundai, Toyota, both supply vehicles. Yep. And a uh, Toyota Mirai might be the next vehicle you know, that I get. I will name drop H two X Global. Barclay Pierce client yep. who who is innovating in the light commercial vehicle front, so they have the world's first all wheel drive hydrogen Ute. Yep, the War War Warrigal Warrigo Warrigo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know all these all these use cases are there on the sidelines. They're waiting for reliable 
cheap supply you get of reliable, hydrogen. You get reliable supply, you're going to get user take up, and then you're going to get more popularity, it, and then it just is a free-flowing thing and the dog chases its tail to heaven. E- exactly, and, oh. the, and the ecosystem starts. So um, I would be doing everything that I can in order to enable the supply. So looking at green hydrogen producers uh, via electrolysis, also supporting the natural hydrogen users. Um, so there are a number of stocks on the ASX in which you can invest into. Yep. Um, we're not going to provide any investment advice there, but if you look <laughs> into it, there are stocks that you can support. Uh, in order to uh, gain financial leverage to the hydrogen uh, phenomenon. Easy. Well, I, I hope that that has helped fill in a lot of the gaps that people may have had and have helped uh, with a few investment ideas that you've got as well. If you want to have any more information, no, get any more information from myself or Jack, please reach out on the links that are going to be provided. Um, but it's been a pleasure bringing uh, this special case on hydrogen to you. My name is James Whelan. I've been joined by Jack Colreavy. Thank you so much for joining us and have yourself a good day.